friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a very hard cataract and in this case i am going to do ecc that is extra capsular cataract extraction and i am going to apply only two sutures let us observe the surgery this is the superior rectus bridal suture I usually turn the eyeball down with the muscle hook, hold the superior rectus tendon with the forceps and very carefully I pass the suture underneath the superior rectus tendon. And now there is a good exposure and we can work very comfortably to make the sclerocorneal tunnel first conjunctival peritomy. A waistcoat scissor is taken and peritomy is done for about 3 clock hours from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Yes, this much peritomy is okay. And now very mild wet field cautery is done. We can do surgery without cautery but there is no harm in doing mild cautery. Very rapidly new blood vessels will grow and this area will be nicely vascularized in few days. But the anterior ciliary arteries that is piercing the sclera is protected and now this is the incision a straight incision and on either side of it another two incisions so we have got you can see about a trapezoid incision. Size of this incision is about the length of this incision from one end to the other end is about 9 millimeter. And now I'm going to do a tunnel, sclerocorneal tunnel, as we do in small incision cataract surgeries. If we do a tunnel, the number of sutures to be applied will be much less. But if we don't make any tunnel, we have to put many sutures, even a shoeless suture may be necessary and the wound is much weaker. Mild trauma can open the wound, but this sclerocorneal tunnel is much resistant mild trauma will not cause opening of this wound so this is a nice sclerocorneal tunnel I'm holding the sclera or conjunctiva tenens very gently so that I don't cause any laceration of the now see what has happened as I held the corner of the wound there is a bleeding has started probably this is a arterial and we have to cauterize it to get a clean surgery so I ask for the cautery again and just one touch will be enough yes if we do wet field cautery the surgery is looks neat and clean and it is very uh, much helpful to beginners and now this is a side port from 8.45 to 9 o'clock, between 8.45 and 9 o'clock. 
Now I'm going to stain the anti capsule underneath this air bubble. Stain with tripan blue dye. And here goes the dye. The main tunnel, the sclerocorneal tunnel, has not been opened. The sclerocorneal tunnel is not self sealing, we know that. So I am going to put switches to close the sclerocorneal tunnel. The dye is washed out with BSS. And now the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% SPMC. SPMC is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, 2%. SPMC is applied over the cornea also for better visibility and now I'm going to do a large rexis with a needle with a bent 26 gauze disposable needle. Why large rexis? Because I'm going to prolapse this big nucleus through the opening. And now the needle goes through the side port conjunctiva a limbus complex is held at the limbus and here is the rexus. A, a capsular flap is raised and this flap is guided anticlockwise and a large rexis is done. This is a big rexis and nuclear prolapse will be very easy. And now I'm going to open the main wound, the sclerocorneal tunnel. We must cut when we go forward, when you go towards the anterior chamber. If we cut when we go anteriorly, the corneoscleral valve remains good. The wound becomes self sealing. But this is a large wound, and I'm not going to depend on self sealing. And the construction of the wound is not a straight incision, neither a frown incision, so I have already decided to put sutures. Hydrodissection is done and the nucleus is dialed out of the capsular bag and it occupies the anterior chamber. Now to protect the corneal endothelium, we must inject a lot of visco anterior to this lens mass and behind the lens mass also. And now I'm going to remove this nucleus just by pressure of visco. Inject a visco bit of visco, depress the posterior leap of the wound and the nucleus comes out. This is known as visco expression of the nucleus. That is a nucleus delivery by viscoelastic substance. We have not used any vectis, nor any irrigating fluid, we just used a bit of visco. When the wound is large like this, it is a very safe, very nice method. Iris prolapse doesn't occur, iris injury doesn't occur, and very nice way of delivering the nucleus but the size of the wound should be adequate and now I'm going to remove the cortex very nicely the cortex is being removed by a 22 gauze Simcoe cannula yes now I go through the side port at 8.45 o'clock and remove the cortex from the upper part.
And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. The capsular bag as well as the anterior chamber is filled up with viscoelastic substance. A rigid lens is being implanted in this case. Rigid PMMA lens. It is a 6 mm optic lens with two dialing holes. But the dialing holes are actually not necessary. We can dial the lens by the haptic optic junction. The lens is nicely in the capsular bag. And now I inject a small bit of air to raise the intraocular pressure and plan suturing of the wound. And I'm going to put only two sutures. The central part of the wound has a straight line on either side it has got two arms of a V-shaped line. So I'm going to put two sutures at the angle, at the corners of this here on. And one more at the other side. In this case, I am going to follow up the case for about 48 hours and trying to compare the astigmatism that has been induced or corrected. We will see that at the end of this video. This video is going to test your patience because it is going to be a long video of about 20 minutes. So this is one suture at the left end of the straight line and now I trim the threads near the knot and I'll try to bury the knot but see what happens as I try to bury the knot anteriorly it becomes difficult. So I am trying to pull it and bury the knot posteriorly and it goes easily in the wound. But it is not always so. We can bury the knot anteriorly also but in that case the anterior leap of the wound tries to evert. So it is better to bury the knot posteriorly. I am not going to make the sutures tight, just adequate tension to oppose the wounds. And this is another suture to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus. And this is going to be a releasable suture. We will see that in a short time how a releasable suture is put. This knot is also buried posteriorly. And now we have lot of visco in the anterior chamber. We must remove that. So here I'm going to remove all the visco nicely. I spent a lot of time in removing the visco. In this part of the surgery, the video has been edited a bit and I'm not going to show removal of all the visco. Spend enough time so that you become sure that all the viscoelastic substance has come out. 
I find that the wound is nicely sealed, the tension is adequate. The sideboard didn't need any hydration in this case. The antechamber is formed, but I'm going to form the antechamber in a, another way. This is the irrigating probe of bimanual IA. One stream goes inside, another one goes outside at the side port. And the antechamber is nicely formed. This is three loops. I hold the thread and pull it. This is releasable suture. And cut the thread with the needle, the longer thread, very close to the knot. The other thread is will be pulled at the outpatient department and it will come out. Now I am going to inject gentamicin and dexamethasone subconjunctively and cause some chemosis. This will oppose the rest of the conjunctiva to the limbus. We are going to see some post-op pictures in this case. These pictures have been taken two days after the surgery. The cornea is absolutely clear, antechamber is quiet, people is around, wound is nice and I'm going to remove the releasable suture. I'll just pull the long thread like this and the suture is removed. This is the comparison of the pre-op and post-op readings. Pre-op readings were 42.5 and 41.75 that is the difference was 0 0.75 and postoperatively the K readings have become 42.25 and 42 that is difference is only 0 0.25 Tho so the two sutures have made all the difference the astigmatism is very insignificant unaided vision of the patient is 6 by 9 and vision with pinhole is 6 by 6. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will inspire you to do large incision cataract surgeries with sutures. This ECC technique may be very very safe for our patients particularly when the cataract is black or brown or very hard cataract.